Hello. Welcome to Matters of Decorum. I'm Scott Corum. This is what matters to me. If you have been following the channel, uh, you may have noticed that I missed a week. Good reason for that. Uh, we are doing a little upgrading around the office. By we, I mean me, my son, and my angel investor. New camera angle because everything here is a little bit different. This is no longer my primary computer, although it is still quite functional and handling a few side jobs over there. That's what the blue glow is from. This more pleasant white glow over here is my other computer screen, on the other side of which is a case heavier than the desk upon it rests. My, my uh, son configured a system. I asked for him to go nuts and configure something a little crazy that'll keep me ahead of the curve for a few years, and he did and it's heavier than my desk. It's mostly the case. He went a little nuts. But the last week was assembling that. So uh, there was just no way to get anything done in here whatsoever. Uh, so here I am now. Hi. Uh, hopefully it'll let me do some more interesting things and render at a higher rate and get things done a little bit faster. We will see how things go. I'm kind of fascinated to see how the uh, project pans out. I'll let you know right here. Inspiration is a funny thing. It is extremely important to the creative process. It is that spark that starts things off. Uh, it is a really, really good spark plug. It is a terrible power source. Inspiration does not move you down the road. Inspiration starts you down the road. The fuel, the gasoline, the stuff that makes the inspiration go from a spark to movement is motivation. Motivation is a difficult thing to come by sometimes. I have a number of things that interfere drastically with my ability to self-motivate. Um, I have come up with a lot of tricks for that over the years. Caffeine, really good music, finding a mnemonic trick. Um, when I was writing the original Hot Chicks and for a few years after that, uh, there was a television in the office. And Vic and I would sit down and watch the television, and, and it was very engaging. We'd just, you know, end up losing a day until I decided, okay, I'm going to turn off the television and start music. And that is the signal that work is happening now. And that really did work. There was a physical action I could do that triggered me into going into that work mode. Huh. <sighs> it, it almost hurt to not have the television anymore. Technically, I, my monitors are uh, fairly large Roku television flat screens with a high refresh rate. So, um, and they're just kind of monstrous. So I could theoretically just turn one of them into a television while I'm working on the other one for a while, be that as it may. Um, I don't have that motivation trigger anymore. I lost a lot of my motivation triggers and my motivating force when I got sick. Um, it was a uh, real problem. It still is. Uh, I, I am doing things to try to modify my capacity to self-motivate, but in taking stock of all the parts of my brain that got negatively affected by having poison pumped through my body for two months, um, go figure, motivation is one of those things that kind of got kicked in the teeth. It's worse at the moment. Uh, the seasonal disorder is slowing down a little bit and I'm getting a little bit more. My motivation also has a limited amount. There's a finite amount of get stuff done 
that I have in my head at any point in time. I think there's a limited amount that everyone has at a point in time, and it's like a muscle. You can build it up, but there's only so many neurochemicals. And I have fewer neurochemicals now. There are holes. There are less synapses to fire across the proper bridges to make things happen. And if I sat down and dedicated myself to a clean afternoon of pure existential dread, I could focus on the holes in my brain and slowly descend into insanity and madness and depression, the likes of which I have never before felt in my life, but that doesn't seem productive. So, motivation. There are ways to increase what you can do. You can remove distractions. Says the man who just got another computer next to his other computer already full of distractions. YouTube, Steam games, stuff just coming across Facebook. Oh my lord, I could spend entire days just randomly surfing across the web, and I have. Um, developing the behavior of turning off the television these days means developing a behavior of putting my YouTube music playlist on and turning everything else off and buckling down to getting something done. It doesn't always work, but it's a good trigger for motivation in the, from the past, so we're going to see if we can't readapt that. You do something. You do anything. You got 50 tasks in front of you. You just pick one up and do it. Small, big, complex, simple, doesn't matter. The more you lift, the more you can lift. The more you do, the more you can do. Uh, and that being said, if you've got all of those options in front of you, you need to narrow it down. If you can't narrow it down, find a group of people that you trust, put your list of tasks in front of them and say, would you help me prioritize this? Uh, if you are incapable of doing that yourself, writing the list alone may help. List prioritize your tasks so that you don't have 50 directions to go because that will also sap your motivation. There's a very short step from I've got 50 steps to go to I might as well do nothing because I can't get them all done. It goes back to number two, lift something. Do a little bit of something, absolutely anything. Mood distractions, lift something, prioritize, and list and prioritize your tasks. And one of the most important ones, I, this comes from no source other than my own history and how I have managed to get things done in the past. And this is kind of me thinking out loud about how I'm going to get back to anything like the levels I had before. Um, fill your head. you are full of your own head, your own thoughts, your own plans, your own desires. And uh, if those are not moving you ahead, fill it with something else, even for just a little while. Tomorrow, I start a class at the Southern California Regional Occupation Center, Intro to Video Game Design. Um, I have taken classes at college before, uh, I, I got a, a good ways into a graphic arts uh, certificate, but it I, there was a lot of prerequisites and other things and tasks I had to do if I was going to go in a direction I wanted to. If I go to the Southern California Regional Occupation Center, or SCROC, for these classes, uh, it is more focused, it is more direct, it also has a certificate system, and it's what I need. Uh, in very concentrated doses. So I'm going to learn to make video games. 
this does not mean I'm not going to make tabletop role-playing games anymore and the other projects I do. It means I'm also going to be able to make video games. I'm adding to the sheer amount of things that I have a choice between what to do. But I'm also adding this to the list of things that I can just do. This will allow me to automate some of the processes that I have uh, used for graphic design and game design uh, in the past, automate them down to the point where I have less of the drudge work to do and I can let a system do that and it can provide me game material without me having to be the computer doing all the work. It's going to give me better edges on my ability to do graphic arts, uh, 3D animation, 3D modeling, all of this stuff. There's, I think there's a physical sculpture class in this, uh, in this lesson track somewhere, uh, which I've wanted to do. I'd like to be able to use my hands a little bit more. I used to be able to use my hands pretty well. I think I remember doing things like that. I have a stack of books I need to read. I've got a stack of movies I need to watch. I still need to catch up on season eight of Voltron. I hear, well, it's going to be the last one, so I better catch up on it. Um, binge watch a couple of series I've been meaning to binge watch. Fill my head. Uh, this helps, one, with motivation because if I see what other people are doing, uh, it's a double-edged sword, both edges of which are good for me. On the one side, I see if someone else is doing something and they're doing it really well, that inspires me to try and match that level of quality. Oh look, that's really good. I think I can hit that. I'd like to see my ideas presented like that. Let me do it. On the other side, you see someone doing something not so well, something that disappoints you or depresses you or just upsets you because you know it could be done better. You want to do something better just to demonstrate that this can be done better. A friend of mine has been engaging in a unfortunate exercise in role playing, play testing a, uh, a module that she just didn't enjoy. It was not the kind of role playing experience that she was looking for and from what she was telling me about it, there are reasons for that. Made me come up with a campaign. And and print out character sheets and learn some rules and let's call it Cthulhu 7th. Uh, it's not that much different from previous editions, but I, I like it. Uh, Chaosium's Call of Cthulhu has always been has always been really, really good uh, system-wise to narrative-wise. Uh, it, it hits the Lovecraftian feel pretty darn nice. So, remove distractions, lift something, even if it's a little something. Uh, list and prioritize your tasks, fill your head. I do not know if this will work for you. Your mileage may vary. Uh, it is what has worked for me in the past. And I'm a creative as a profession. This is what I do day to day. Uh, four days a week I am involved in the role-playing game industry uh, doing demos and running games uh, at the local game store which takes a lot of my time and energy uh, then I have um, all the things I try to get done here I'm going to have classes to go to which is going to take up my time all of this means I need to budget my time. The new computer is part of that because it can do things much faster than this computer could. And that will 
give me a little more time with which to budget. And in budgeting my time, uh, setting aside 8 to 12 hours a day to sit down at my computer and stare at my screen until brilliance comes out of my fingers uh, isn't realistic, nor is it desirable. Uh, I am not working for myself so I can work myself to death. In this budget of time, you have to set a realistic expectation for where your projects are at, what you need to get done, and what your deadlines are. But at the same time, uh, I've got a 17-year-old son who has helped me tremendously with this and who is just getting into role-playing properly and has he's going to graduate from high school in June. And in a year... I might not be seeing him that much anymore because he's already got a line on a good career and a good path to being an independent individual and I might not see him again as much as I have. And if I don't take my opportunities to see my son now and spend time with him, I will never forgive myself when those opportunities are gone. I have a number of friends, very close friends, very good friends, and I need to give them time. That's a lot of what my time on Facebook is. I do a lot of chatting. That's where my social life is. I've got a friend who's bedridden right now. Well, not bedridden exactly, but he's convalescing. And I want to have the time to have with him, at least online, so that he can convalesce more pleasantly. It's not necessarily motivating. Then again, it's not not motivating. Budget your time so that you can get your work done, but so that you have your time for your people. And if you don't have people to budget time for, you might want to look again because you probably do. At least one or two. Someone whose company you will miss if it goes away. I'm 50 years old. I have lost more friends uh, at this age than I ever thought I would. I did not think I was going to be the survivor in some of these groups. Um, and I damn near wasn't. But you don't want to wake up and realize that you were throwing your brain at a brick wall when there was someone there you could have talked to one more time. But trust me, I know this. So there's inspiration and there's motivation. Uh, inspiration is a spark plug. Motivation is your fuel. Next week, I believe I will talk about the steering wheel uh, skill. Thank you for following me along on this particular personal rant through how my damn brain is working and or not. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't enjoy the video, give me a thumbs down. Feedback is feedback. If you have not subscribed to my channel yet, why not? My channel is awesome. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button. If you do, hit the little notification bell so that you are alerted to my videos as soon as they become available. If you have your own experiences with motivating, self-motivating, having someone else motivate you, if there's anything you'd like to hear me talk about, subjects you would like me to cover, leave me a comment below. I will love getting your comment and you will love leaving me one. If you would like to help the channel in a more substantial fashion, I invite you to hit me up my Patreon page, www.patreon.com slash scottcorum, and consider donating. Absolutely anything helps and allows me to make better videos more often. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching. 
I'm Scott Quorum. This is what has mattered to me, and I will see you next time on the next Matters of Decorum.